All right, we are recording. I'll send it over to you, Mr. McDade. And the floor is yours, sir. Awesome. All right, uh, well, like first things first, I just want to kind of kick off uh, and kind of tell a little bit of just about myself, how everything got lined up for me. Uh, first things first, uh, I was a captive agent for six, seven years, right? Uh, and then I realized uh, I wanted to run my own, you know, agency kind of from top to bottom. So I had to wait out my non-compete, take a little bit of time, and then kind of kick up my scratch agency accordingly. So uh, being someone that kind of majored in marketing, like I love thinking creatively and trying to just take advantage of all the tools that I have available. And for me, what that lines out to be is, is that whatever I'm given, finding a way to kind of fit that into the mold that I want, right? So for me, kicked it off, got out really good, started doing the first things first, which is trying to sell business as a scratch agency, right? Um, me and Adam Ryder have talked about that before, just as part of the different things that he's had to do to end up getting some stuff lined out and the different way that I was attacking it. I was the dude that ended up uh, kind of selling in my first uh, month as, you know, kind of finally being able to do my quoting, do my calling, all that kind of good stuff. I was able to sell 103000 in premium. And that was my first month kicking off, having stuff lined out. And I was terrified, like absolutely and utterly terrified by it because I realized I was building the thing that I got away from, right? It's one of those situations wow. where I had just been sending no. out the, RV, wow. the, like, the RBMs, the conversation pieces. Is that on? Uh, say it again. Okay. It's uh, it's Steve. Steve, can you mute your line, bud? Everyone on the call, yeah, go ahead. And Sorry, mute. guys. No, no you're oh, good. Oh, hey, we're 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 making it. We're making it. It's all ups and downsies. Uh, so I was terrified by that, just in the process of not really being um, set up and created into a spot that I could actually benefit anyone that I would hire or anyone that I would, you know, kind of bring over, I would just be offering them exactly what any big box store would be offering. Hey, I have a way to bring in leads for you every once in a while. I have a way for some things to get pushed out. And it was at that moment where I had to come up with just basically my standard operating procedures, or at least my thought process on what I wanted to do to separate my agency. Right. And with that came learning and understanding the tools I had at hand. And I don't know how many of y'all have really kind of delved into the possibilities of Agency Elephant or exactly how it ends up lining itself out, but it integrates in place with so many different things. And it's only basically confined by what your imagination can be, right? So what I had to do was I had to sit back, line out, all right, my main line goal is to make the things that my agents don't have to readily be available for automated, right? From top to bottom. So I started thinking about, all right, so statistically speaking, salespeople sell 30% of the day if they're amazing, right? The rest of the day, they're waiting on stuff, trying to get some things squared away, doing follow-up calls, making voicemails, doing all that kind of stuff. And it got me into this mindset of, all right, now, how can I build my process out to make things a lot easier and a lot cleaner? And the next piece of that conversation really lined itself out to be, how can I be specific in what I want in each particular section? So I'm just going to share my, uh, my screen here, and then we can kind of look at it. Um, hey, Charles, there, there's a way on there for you to mute everybody. I don't know who it is. I think it's Steve DeRoach. All right, let me just go. Let me go through these. Let me just. Steve, mute Shannon. That that chick needs to be muted. <laughs> All right, I'm just scrolling through. All right, Steve, muting, muting. Mute Zahid and Jackie too. Make All right, sure got, I got everybody, I believe. $50. You Venmo request 50 bucks from every person that doesn't have the self-discipline to mute their damn Zoom. Yeah. Right. No. Um, before you I was go muted on, Charles, until now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> before you go on, Charles, I wanna I wanna highlight something that you were just saying. Is he was talking about how when he's setting up his agency, 
making sure that his systems are set up and also it being kind of a fear point for him of being the same business that he left the what was it all state no it was liberty mutual okay either way the same cookie cutter box store where you're promising everything and not being able to possibly deliver on it or also making sure that when he does bring someone in he does give them the ability to succeed it's finding that balance of how can I get them to succeed while also being scared of creating the thing that I wanted to leave right and so that was part of his fear and building this out and um well, and I feel like too, with, with how many on the call from the faces I can see, how many are solo agents, no staff, raise your hand. Okay. How many have staff? Okay. About 50, 50 to, for me, I would, the, the, I could make excuses as to why I was doing busy work. Well, I'm the agency owner. I have to scan this document. I have to send this voicemail. I have to call this per But when you start paying someone's payroll, I want those people as ridiculously efficient as possible, right? I don't, I don't want to pay them, like, like, like Charles said, 30% of their day is selling. Well, if I can get that number to 70, 80, 90% of their day, now that person that I'm paying 15, $18 an hour is worth 40, $50 an hour, right? And so it's just, it's fine tuning those processes, just like Charles said, in, in giving your staff, giving your team the system to be successful. Like that is, that is the, the biggest hurdle I think for most agents with a software like this is finding the right way to use it. So I'm excited for what you have to say, Charles, back to you, bud. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, like the way, the way that I really go through, all right, we're going to have to go through this again. And whoever's on the, uh, the road Gavin using Robert. their 18 wheeler is going to be hilarious. Gavin driving that Peterbilt to the office today. All right. So, so I think us, I got everybody out. Show us all what right. we got on that screen. Cause this is, and if we all take a second, I know we all are agency owners or agents. If we all take a, a minute to watch this step-by-step, step, what Charles is going to go through, um, you will not be disappointed. So, all right. So basically my conversation was exactly that. How in the world can I get it to where all the things that salespeople hate to do, they no longer have to do. I want to be able to look every single person that is in my office in the eye and say, hey, you can start your own agency tomorrow. Hell, I'll, I'll help you. I'll tell you, you know, exactly the company I'm going through. I'll run all that conversation by you. Not a problem. And I want you to know in your heart of hearts, you'd make more money with me. Like that's the way that I view the entire part of the conversation, because at the end of the day, as an agency owner, that's exactly what we're focused on. Like how in the world can I possibly keep talented people? How can I try, how can I train, hire and retain talent? And that is what drove me to start building some of this stuff out. And I'll kind of outline it here in a second. All right. So here's my process. And here's how I flow through it. Okay. So I have all my leads that end up coming in, right? I have two different drip boxes. All right. If, if y'all can see this successfully, just, you know, Matt, let me know. You're good. All right. Great. So what I have is I have two different sets of pipelines, right? This one's for myself. Whenever I end up getting a uh, person that calls in, I get a quote, I move them over into the new business proposal line which just basically is setting up what the goal is. And the goal for all of us is as soon as we end up getting that proposal sent out, my goal is to get them back on the phone to close, right? That's the main line. So for me, I was like, all right, so how can I automate that process in a better way? So I created some SOPs to allow us to basically put ourselves in a positive situation. As soon as I move someone over to like this file right here, they immediately get a text just letting them know, hey, I've sent over your quote, wanted to make sure everything looked right. Please let me know if you received it, right? If they don't respond or if they do respond, doesn't matter. There's another follow-up that goes out the next day that just says, hey, I'm just making sure that everything I quoted looked like it's supposed to. And those two are just done by text, 
right? Because it's a very soft ask, nothing I really need to end up focusing on too heavily. Then after that, we end up getting into, well, what's the main thing we're trying to get after we end up having a proposal? For me and how I run my business, that is a admitting someone that's a calendar notification, right? Like that's them trying to end up getting into my actual calendar. Okay. So what I don't know if y'all understand that you can do is, and I'll go over here to the calendar run real quick. All right. You can assign a deal status to everybody that actually sets themselves up for in your calendar. And you can do that for everybody. Okay, so that way there, it doesn't even have to be a manual process to even verify whether or not someone is someone that created an actual uh, appointment calendar for you. Okay, and then something else that I did, which I kind of stole this from my uh, primary care physician, right? Um, you, you know how you constantly end up getting those text messages that get sent out? And it's like 10 days before, five days before, two days before, 30 minutes before, okay? Just to kind of make sure that they know that they have the appointment set up and that they're being reminded in the same way that all of us are oh so used to in different lines of business. Just because we're an insurance doesn't mean we, don't, we can't take inspiration or best practices from other things and other businesses to make sure that our policies are actually set up a bit better. Our standard operating procedures are set up better. Okay. So for me, I have it set up to where if they set up an appointment for themselves, they end up going 10, five, two, and 30 minutes before. And I just use the quick, um, you know, insert tokens. Hey, uh, Matt, want to send a quick reminder. We have a meeting to chat appointment time, uh, Charles and Dade, uh, in my group. Right. And this is a way for us to just kind of stay on top of it. So now I don't have to have my producers follow up and figure out whether or not they actually are on top of their um, on top of their calendar invites. OK. And even on this one, I have it set up to where uh, all the tokens go in. So I have it sent out 45 minutes ahead of time to where it gives me their name, their mobile number and the appointment time. That way I have enough information, even if I'm for whatever reason away from the office or whatever the case may be, I can call them and walk them through the process. So again, this is the focus on being specific to what you want in your agency, what your standard operating procedures are. If your goal in the conversation is to try to close everything on the first call, great. But that's not what's going to happen. I mean, so we got to have something that back ends that piece of information, okay? So please understand how powerful that this calendar setup can be. And something else that was shared after they end up setting up their, um, their appointment, they actually get redirected to my testimonial page, which this I'll show huge. you all that. This is huge, everyone. This is really cool. So and this is exactly what I talked them. about yesterday. This is the same exact thing. This was from Char the horse's mouth. So the biggest reason why that I use my landing page here to give people an idea of what other clients have said about me and about the agency, the agents that we have, right? Because I actually started bringing people in to the agency after I found out how quickly I can advance myself using agency elephant and being able to just line this stuff out this way for them. Okay. So as soon as they end up clicking on the calendar, getting stuff done, they get redirected to this page. The reason why I use this one and I do not give them my Google review is because I don't want people randomly being unhappy that they're getting a call or a text from me for whatever reason, and then leaving me a review. Oh, he called me once and I don't, I don't know if I ever talked to him or, Oh, he called me about insurance. And like, you know, I didn't, I didn't respond and I didn't want anything. So I gave him a zero star where we don't have to deal with that. So because we're using the client testimonials, it gives them an idea of what other people have done. And if you're looking at statistics for marketing, I think it's somewhere along the lines of like Jen uh, millennials are 80% more likely to do things that have been either uh, recommended to them by someone they trust or what other people are currently doing. 
Well, let's utilize that statistic in our closing metrics to help our closing percentage go up. Okay, so by using this particular page, I'm able to give them a bunch of examples of people, what they loved, what they didn't immediately. So that way we're able to push ourselves into a better conversation to allow for everything to end up flowing as easy as possible. Do you, do you get any analytics on the, from this page here? Like how uh, long I'm working on getting more okay. analytics from this page. I do know that it's been helpful on the conversation, even what, because I have this, all right, so we'll, we'll back out of that and I'll just show you this part as well. So Question what I tried to do to get analytics is it's a bit different. I use bit.ly for that. Okay. So what I've tried to end up doing, let me see here. Mm -hmm. And quick question as you're going through this, talking about analytics, this is also a key spot when you get somebody on the calendar appointment to remind them, Hey, did you have a chance to take a look at that website on our calendar? Did you have a chance to look at what our clients say about us? You can again, reinforce that and use that landing page as your um as like a reinforcement of the quality of job you do right and you can tie back to that through your conversation like hey i'm not sure if you read jillian's her jillian's testimonial but i go over a series of questions to determine your actual exposure before i offer you a product or offer you a coverage you know you can always tie back into that so what I love is, is that uh, Bitly can give you statistics on how often things have been clicked, right? And I'm in the process of replacing all of my standard um, uh, like web links to end up being more specific so I can actually gather that information, which can help me do a lot of things like just seeing how effective some things are. So not only finding a way for your information to be sent out, but be having a, the ability to be able to track that is beneficial. So this right here will be swapped out. But just to give you an idea of this is the reason why I use Agency Elephant as my phone, because there's so many things that I can do. So I use my office line, right, as my call out machine, if you will. Right. So anytime someone calls, whether it's a client, whether it is a, um, a new person trying to end up getting a quote immediately when they dial my number. OK, they get a text message about, hey, thanks for calling us back. Please check out what other clients have said. And then, boom, I put it in there. OK, so because I have it set up to where this goes out immediately, it's happening while the phone is ringing for me and I'm able to pick up. And that is so massive in the midst of the conversation, because instead of it being like, oh, this is a scam call or, oh, this is whatever. Like, no, they're able to see my page immediately, which just draws up the level of trust that they have, even if they haven't seen the number before. So I want to just kind of move backwards from there. So something else that I've done in the case that someone does have a teammate, right? So I love being able to do this. Let's just remove this real quick. I know I'm messing with something I currently have. So what I love is like, let's say if I want to end up doing, there we go. All right. So what I love about Agency Elephant as well is that you can use the same number to do multiple things. So for example, what I've done is in the past, if I'm running a very aggressive, high call volume, uh, ringless voicemail, I'll have it set up to where it'll ring one phone number. Like let's say if it's an assistant, let's say if it's a service rep, whatever, for five seconds before it transfers to me. That way, if I'm in the office with someone, I, they can just kind of either peek their head in or they know that I'm on a call. They can pick it up for me before it gets transferred to me. And that is able to help out increasing the number of people that I can call from one specific RBM. Instead of it just being sent directly to me, I can have it directly sent to where it'll ring this person's phone and then it'll ring this group's number. Or you can even end up throwing in a, a group dial if you feel like it as well. Right. So there's just so many different ways that you're able to make it 
uh, so that your people don't feel like they're shackled to their desk in the case that something happens to where it'll ring their phone for five seconds maybe and then maybe send it to a, uh, your main office line for someone else to end up picking it up. Because if they're calling back, you don't want to lose that conversation at that point in time, right? Because if they're calling us back, that's a perfect opportunity for us to be successful. Okay? It's important from an agency owner standpoint to be able to say, if I've got multiple agents, I can make sure that if there's an inbound call, like Brian has two staff that are at his office. If he wasn't using a hardline phone that rang his office and his, and his staff were working remote, right? he could make sure that, okay, this is going to ring their phone for 15 seconds. And Ariel knows that if I'm unable to pick it up, it's not going to go to voicemail. It's going to go to Karina's phone, right? And she's going to have 15 seconds and then it's going to go to voicemail, right? So they know that, okay, I have people here that are watching my back or make sure that are covering this area if I'm unable to answer. So you can control that workflow, which is pretty, pretty powerful if you think about it that way. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take five minutes and open it up for some questions. Is that all right, Charles? Yeah. Cool. Charles, I, I got a question. Are you not doing Google reviews or Facebook reviews? Or are you, because I, I looked real quick while we were on the call and I didn't really see any Google reviews there. Maybe I'm out of the area. Oh, no, no. I, 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 Transfer over, alt, screw it. Like, here we go. He's going to show us. Or are you just going to enter their Google review into the testimonial? I just enter the Google review. I have my stuff run by Insurance Splash. So I have all of my, and I'll just, I'll share this because why the hell not? Uh, so, so far, I have 42 Google reviews, and we've been focusing on this for only two and a half months, right? Uh, so basically, I'll share the screen with it. There we go. So what I did was, is that I just copied these, Can right? So? Say it again. Uh, I just think Ricky's mic is on. Okay, it. no problem. So I just capture, I just copy pasted this and then just asked my uh, insurance splash to end up throwing it in there, right? And that's the easiest way. I'm focusing on Google reviews specifically because uh, since I've been running the onboarding campaign from like built for you, I changed it a little bit just to kind of have my own particular verbiage in there. Right. But Google review is where I'm focused. Go back to that Google review for a second, Charles. This is yeah. important to understand. If we all pulled up our Google reviews, how long have you been in business? Right. How long have you personally been in business? How many Google or farmers reviews, however you want to call it, Charles, what you're less than a year into this, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm only. Let's say scratch agency. Everything up and running. We started out in June. I had a child in August, so I took two weeks off, and then I had to end up finding a new area for my office to be located, and all that stuff happened within the last couple. So I'm probably like two to three months into actually kind of selling on okay. a decent run. So yeah, so Even under under six truly- months, if you will. Even if you truly started like gung ho in June, to have 42 reviews in less than six months is huge. And that is not because, I mean, Charles is very good at what he does, but he is not so over the top unbelievable at what he does that it warrants 42 reviews. He gets 42 reviews because he asks every single time he writes a policy, right? Through agency, absolutely. Through automation, he asks and gives them a link to give their review. That's why he has forty-two reviews. And so that's important to understand. Is and Charles talks about this all the time. Is focus on one small thing. He's giving us a huge overview of all the stuff he's doing. But everything that Charles has done in his account, because I've talked with him a lot about this is he is very laser focused on one area. And then once he nails that one area, he goes to the next. He's like, okay, my Google reviews are on point. I've got 42. I can move my attention to the next thing on my list. So all of the things he's going over, like his pipeline, having standard operating procedures, like this is overwhelming even for me to take in all of this information. But what you have to understand is he created a list of this is what I'm laser focused on. And for this segment of my day, that is the only thing I'm working on. 
And then once he felt that what he did was acceptable to his standards, he then moved that attention to the next thing, right? And so that's what's really important to take away from what Charles is talking about. All of these things that he has done in less than six months in his agency, like not even agency elephant, but in his agency, all of the things he has done in six months have been because he has said, I need to focus on this. Now that it is acceptable, I am going to move my attention. Hey, Charles, what's your, uh, what's your beta test like? How many times do you test and revise and boil it down and test and revise and boil it down. Oh, that, that process, I, I look at it as like a consistent beta, but if it doesn't work 50 times like in a row, then it's not, it's not fixed yet. Right. Like that, because at, at that point in time, you have to double check if someone enters it in crate in a weird way, because if, if it's not so simple that, it's almost impossible to mess up. You need to revamp your process. When right? you were when you were just getting started with Agency Elephant, <clears throat> where did you did you spend a lot of time in the knowledge base? Did you spend a lot of time like where did you get the skill set to learn this? So it's knowledge base first, trying to end up getting some information there. Um, and then sometimes just because of how weirdly I think about stuff or how I'm trying to get things to work together, it's me working on Saturdays and Sundays, like, like, or me working super late nights, just in the office, trying to get what I want to work because there's a lot of things that I'm doing that I know that a lot of us haven't tried before, or if they have tried, they haven't talked to me about it. You know, I'm, I'm more than open with talking with, uh, you know, inside of either the, uh, the demo calls that we have or inside of the, uh, the, the open mic chats, because hell, there's, there's so many people here that are trying out specifically really awesome stuff that you can change a little piece of it and then come up with a whole new system of how to drive leads. Right? Like I took, I, and, and this is, I've talked to um, Matt about this a ton. Whenever he brought up the fact that he was working with a, a solar person, right? Immediately my mind clicked to, I know I can get roofers to send me business by utilizing the same process because of where I'm located right? If you're in a place that has some crazy, and I'm in Houston, right? If you have a place that has some absolutely crazy weather patterns, you being able to touch bases with a roofer and then like, look, everyone purchases off of emotion. How can you control that emotion? Okay. So what I mean is for some of my leads, Hey man, whenever there's a hailstorm, all of my leads are going to get a text, not from me, but from my roofer that I will pass those leads on. I'll just say, hey man, there's a hailstorm here in Houston. Uh, you know, just uh, touching bases with people, making sure that they have a, uh, a roofer handy to make sure that there's no damage. And because these people are not, they're not mine, they're just leads that I have either from cold X dates or prior situations or whatever. Well, that's good for two reasons. Number one, what happens after you have a claim? Your rate goes up or they deny it. Either way it goes, they're gonna be shopping for insurance in the next year. And because I was the one that was able to broker that relationship with them, they're going to mention my name three times on requirement. Okay. So I want them to say, Oh, you know, Hey, I was looking at your policy. You know, I've, I've mostly done a lot of work with uh, MIB group, you know, they're a brokerage. So, I mean, we'll see how this one's written out. Okay. Hey, I'm checking over your policy. It's strange that it has actual cash value for the roof and not replacement costs. Again, like dealing with MIB group, I never had to deal with that before. However, that line has to be. And then like, well, Hey, you know, if you ever need to end up shopping around for it, or Hey, if we're not able to end up getting it um, approved by your current, or if you find out you have to pay it out of pocket, Hey, I'll help you get it done. But I suggest you probably look at switching your insurance. Right. And that allows for me to be the funnel for not only myself, but also for other agencies and other lines. I look at it as I'm a marketing company that accidentally sells insurance. That's the way I look at my brokerage now. And that's my SWOT analysis on myself. 
Okay. And to kind of go back, like I said, everyone knows I'm right here in Houston, right? So just to give you an idea of what I'm up against, like Mike Powell 23. Uh, and look, these people are paying money to be at the top of the search bar whenever you look up insurance brokerage Houston, right? 23, 3, 12, 1, right? 1, uh, like 31, right? Uh, Linda, 1, right? Dean and Draper, like 38, right? And look, Susan and Brown, like we're, we're in Houston. And at this point in time, like I still have more reviews than some of the people that ended up pulling up, right? And that just makes it to where it's massively helpful as a differentiation piece for me to actually end up getting more clients to call me. And just to show you how effective that has already been, we got a phone call. We've gotten in the last two weeks, we've gotten five phone calls. I'm not paying for ads on Google. I'm just pushing my Google reviews like a crazy person. And that is going to throw me up on the algorithm because I'm having so much interaction on my page. So Google basically pays for me to keep getting boosted higher and higher. I've gotten five policies. We've closed four of them. Like that's massive for free advertising into what you can do by just asking for a Google review. It's nothing crazy. It's just, I have it set up to where when they onboard, I'm using that built for you onboarding process. They immediately end up getting sent the information that I need them to have to be able to benefit the entire process. And then when somebody clicks that link and it takes them to his testimonial page, that is again, another viewer, which is again, an SEO tactic, which then promotes his website even more frequently. Now, how often when you Google things, are you hitting the first thing on Google? Typically, you're scrolling to see which ones have the best review in that first page or two. Most hey, people... Charles, did you see Elizabeth's question? You want to answer that verbally? I don't like. I don't want you yeah, to type. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. A, yeah, this is big. Oh uh, yeah, no. So I I flat out text them that hey, there's been a there's been a hail claim, and uh, that here you can reach out to this roofer if you need someone to take a look at it. Right. Uh, that has nothing to do with me selling anything. That has nothing to do with anything that is not allowed. That is me giving information to what recently happened, right? So that allows me to basically create the emotion that I need for a lot of people to actually want to switch their insurance, okay? So when you want someone to switch their insurance, it's normally because, oh, my, my, I just hit renewal. Even though they can switch all year round, they don't switch until they hit renewal because they're mad about how much their rate went up or they got a claim and it was denied because they found out they didn't have coverage, right? Well, not only does that help me create the emotion for those leads, but it also helps me lower my actual like claim issue on my end because I'm insuring people with newer roofs, right? So it's a two headed kind of conversation where yes, I'm able to drive in more leads because I'm using this particular run to end up getting that emotion. But then on top of that, I'm able to lower my exposure as someone riding in Houston to make sure that my numbers aren't skewed because I'm riding a, a ton of old rooms that never got checked out, et cetera. So it's just, it's just massive. So I hope that answers your question a little bit better, Elizabeth. So out of that, is there anyone else that has any other questions? I know I'm going pretty fast on the run and I just want to kind of slow it down for a second to see if there's anyone that I'm like going right over for. Do you want to re, you want to circle back? You covered it, but it was quick. And I want to make sure people understand the power when it comes to the sales pipeline from your calendar being switched to the urgent status on that lead status. You want to just cover that again, just briefly? Yeah, Absolutely. All right, here, let me share my screen again. I'll let me go over to the uh, actual calendar. And then um, explain when you're going through that, your thought process when you're building it, because I think people have a huge disconnect when thinking about what they want to happen versus how to actually put it on paper or in action. So let's start here. Every single call you make must be with a purpose. If it does not have a purpose, you do not make the phone call. If your purpose is to check in with someone, fine. If your purpose is 
to uh, figure out when they want to end up moving their insurance, fine. But your people shouldn't be spending time unless there's a specific purpose. For us, most of the time, the purpose is I want them to give me 20 to 30 minutes so I can do my process of selling and advising on insurance. Okay. That's why I use the Google calendar because it makes things so much easier to figure out who has what on their calendar for today. So you can understand what their pipeline is going to look like next week, next month, and what they're possibly going to sell. Okay. So what I've done here is I've selected a deal status that I want all of my calendar uh, invites for this specifically to go to. Okay. So the reason for that is I can know, well, I don't need to keep following up with those people. If you're, if you have a pipeline that has automation attached to it and you have to physically move them, right? If someone sets an appointment last night and you didn't get here early enough this morning to move them, well, that puts you in a situation where someone's getting double text after they already created the, uh, the appointment. So just by going over here and actually clicking on what deal status, I mean, you don't have to use this, this word, this verbiage use, you know, meeting, right. Or use, uh, whatever else that you want it to be you know, meeting set or appointment set right inside of your calendar. And then the only automation I have that's attached are you to are this you supposed to be sharing your screen right now. Oh yeah. You should be, you, you pulled a Brian and Matt look at you. I pull, I, pu I pulled it and I, that's, that's on me share. It, All right. Happens. My fault guys. It's good. Uh, I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. I've become what I hate most, which is Matthew Hahn. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so yes. any, any way. So I use my urgent status as a way there's no, there's absolutely no automation attached to that pipeline because all the automation for that pipeline is my calendar specifically. Okay. And the reason for that is, is like, what are you, what is the purpose of your follow-up? Once they're creating their calendar, it's just to remind them that they have a damn appointment. That is the only reason why you're going to be reaching out to them at all. So let's create a way that makes it flow pretty easy. All right. 10 days ahead of time, five days ahead of time, two days ahead of time, 30 minutes before, right? Just because that's the same schedule that my primary care physician, my, my doctor uses to make sure that I show up to my appointment. Okay. So this makes it to where if you don't show up to our appointment, um, I fucking hate you. <laughs> like, like this, that's like, I, I will, I, I have, I literally, I created a, a, a fuck you file. Okay. And I'm just going to show what that is. All right. So basically, uh, da, 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 da. all right. So I guess, I guess we're taking our call there. Yeah. Buck, buckle yeah. up everybody. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what it here is. All right. So <laughs> here's, here's the, uh, here's the, I, I, I hate you file. Okay. So I blast them for 10 damn days and it's every damn day. Okay. Because you know what? You missed my appointment and I want you to know that you're a pile. Okay. It's like, so immediately, of course, as soon as you miss the appointment, you call them, they don't pick up immediately they get a text message that just says, Hey, looks like I missed you. Okay. Just nice, sweet, whatever. I'll share it. I don't care. Okay. It looks like I missed you. Please reschedule, uh, where you, uh, so we can pick up where you left off. Boom. Right. That's a link to my calendar. Again, I'm, I'm replacing these with bitly, bitly links. All right. So then the following day they get another text message. It just says, Hey, look, I hate following up when my clients are busy. When's a better time to chat? Super duper small ass, super duper like not a big deal, whatever. Okay. And then I decide to go just a little bit more ignorant in my conversation. Hey, is everything okay? I'm worried an alligator might have eaten you. Okay. Right. Because at that point in time, I just like, you're not a real lead to me anymore. You're not even a real person because you missed your appointment and you haven't responded for three days. Okay. That means there's something wrong with your soul. All right. Hey, Charles, so, quick question. No problem. If they go ahead and reschedule on your calendar after that first link, does the automation automatically stop or do you have to manually stop? No, no, it automatically, it, 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 the automation is set to where every single time, and I'll go back to this, every single time you end up, uh, sorry, oopsie daisy. 
All right, we all screw stuff up. Every single time someone creates an appointment on my specific Charles calendar, the one that I'm using for leads, they immediately move it to back into the urgent status because that's how agency, that's how powerful understanding our tool structure is, is that you can have it set up to where every single time they will go to urgent for you or miss or appointment set, whatever. Okay. This is my own playbook verbiage that I have because I'm a broken human being. Okay. So I, I even go as far. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. All right. No problem. So what and I decided to do was be real quick, Charles, if they no responded problem. to that text, it says on that text settings, future follow up. No, which means if they respond to the text, the drip stop as well. yeah, I'm fixing there was there's still process of fixing because I'm, I'm going through it because that's something I haven't had anyone miss an appointment yet. So I'm still tailoring it out to be exactly what I want it to be, right? But it's just one of those situations where, you know, even I screw up. So you know what? You caught me, Matt. All right. You, you caught me. No, you, you had it right. You, you had, had it right. right. You had, you it, had right. it absolutely right. Your okay. future follow-ups right. were set as no. It, Keep that, in mind, though, guys, if you set that up to yes or no and you build out a 10-step drip talking about alligators and shit, and you want to change that, you have to rebuild the whole thing because it locks those settings in. You just duplicate it at that point. You would just use right. the load settings and duplicate your drips. You won't have to rebuild it. You just have to duplicate it and then delete the old one. All right. So I like going super ignorant at this point in time because like I said, they're not real people to me anymore. They, they missed appointments. I don't care. So I do stuff like this, all right? Hey, morning, first name. I'm checking to make sure everything's okay. I'm starting to worry that pet gator got, uh, our pet gator got out again, okay? You know why? Because it's, and so here's, what, here's what's funny though. This right here, I can embed my calendar link inside of there. What's great about how social media has created all of us on our phone, whenever we look at it, whenever we wanna make a picture bigger or to be like, what the hell does this even say? and they click on it, they immediately go to my calendar to set your damn appointment, okay? Because that's what you're supposed to be doing, all right? So it's one of those situations where you can end up being as creative as you want to, right? And in my process, this works out just fine, okay? Keep in mind, be keep in mind too, we work in a very beige and boring industry, right? Like this is insurance. If you would have told me in high school that I was going to be an insurance agent, like I probably, yeah, I don't know what I would have done. This is like the most, like it's one step up above like librarian, right? Let's call a spade a spade. Like this is a beige industry. And what Charles is doing is flexing that, that personalization, that human approach to a very beige and boring industry. And whether someone clicks on it, doesn't click on it, reschedules, does business with Charles or not, they're going to remember MIB group because their approach is completely different than anyone else in Houston. I had so much fun. I, I didn't even ask Matt. I just sent it to his email and his exact like response was, what the hell the is morning. this? It was three in the morning and it was like two in the morning and I look at it and he knew I looked at it. So he DMs me. He's like, what'd you think of that? And I said, I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. Like, what is this? But to circle it back to this is what Charles is doing with all of this. Like he's gone through a plethora of stuff and it is a lot of stuff to take in. But this is all he is doing in his, not, not agency elephant isn't all he's doing, but as an agency owner, this is his job is to say, this is the process I'm focusing on today. And it is people that miss appointments. What is that going to look like? And he builds it out, laser focused on one thing until it is acceptable to his standards. And then he moves on as an owner to the next thing. And it's not that he's not spending time in his agency throughout the day. He's doing this early in the morning. We've been on a Zoom call at 4.45 a.m. on a Saturday. Like he's 
He's not doing this during office hours for the most part. He understands the importance of, <laughs> look at Steven, he's like, ah, maybe he is. He understands the importance of, it takes, a, it takes usually a step back to take multiple steps forward. And that step back is usually time. So where are you finding your time to do it? And I think, go ahead, I'm sorry. And it's not like we had a user talk about it yesterday. He's like, I'm getting pulled in 10 different directions. I'm not really focusing on any of it. So I don't really know how to implement or use any of this. And it's like, yes, that is, you are absolutely right. If you are gonna segment out time for this, you need to shut it down. Even if it's for 30 minutes or an hour, shut it down. I think my biggest takeaway, like everything he does is awesome. But he said, I don't know, I kind of have it half-assed written down. We're a marketing company that happens to sell insurance. Like when you have that approach to your agency, you're going to be successful. People are going to know who you are. By default, you're going to get opportunity. You know, that is, that's a huge, if you don't have that written down, like write that down. That's, that's how we should all, in my opinion, that's how we should all be operating. We're a marketing firm that happens to sell insurance because we can also be a marketing firm that happens to dish referrals to a roofer or happens to dish referrals to a solar person too. Um, or but dish referrals to your place, producers. Like you yeah, could dish absolutely. your referrals to your, or leads to your producers. Like understanding your role as, as what your role is in an agency is if you're not spending 80%, 70% of your day marketing or prospecting for new business, that encompasses building out tools to market and cultivate. That encompasses a whole range of things. But you should, as the owner, be spending at least 70% of your day building and creating systems to generate leads and referrals. Charles so is gonna that's show, the piece, I right? Charles is going to show how to embed that yes. into a picture. And then for the sake of time, we've got nine minutes, soon to be eight minutes left. And I want this recording to be exactly 60 minutes. So Charles, however you need to pivot. No problem. Right. So here you go right here. Okay, this is how you embed a link. Like you can just basically put your, put your image inside of here, right? You wanna go to image, uh, go, you can go to either, uh, you can either put, a, if it's a, just a standard, you found it on Google, you can put your, your link right here on what that URL is. If not, you can just copy and paste whatever image that you have inside of your actual computer and put it in there. And then from there, you're just gonna highlight it. And then you're just gonna click the link button and then you can just slap whatever link you want in here, okay? And then that, that's how easy it is for you to embed a link in a ridiculous, ridiculous picture, okay? So it's, it's nothing crazy on the process, but it's just stuff that you can do inside of it. And then Matt actually has a really good video on how to embed like a video inside of your actual uh, email as well. And you can just search that on Agency Elephant at any point in time. Okay, so uh, just to kind of last little piece of this before we kind of get into uh, the last run of convos. Okay, uh, just to kind of go over. All right, let's see here. Missed appointments right there. Okay, so I, like I said, I blow them up like 11.45, 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 9 a.m., 11.45, all around lunch or when I think they're picking up their monster children. Okay, because obviously if they miss an appointment, their kids don't have souls either. Okay, so I hit them up every single day and I do like a 10 day blitz. And then after that 10 day blitz happens, then they go into like my X date folder, right? To where I just follow up with them every, you know, uh, you know, 60 days, like then, you know, three months and then blah, blah, blah for the rest of their life until they buy or die. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the process that you have to look at when you're thinking about data in our industry. I want to kind of think of it a little bit differently. I don't think that there's have and have nots anymore. I think there's like data elites, the people that have the way and the information to be able to connect buyers and sellers. And that is what is so much more powerful than anything else. If you have the data to know that a bunch of people got new roofs, dude, you would you would foam at the mouth for that to be your process, right? So just think about what exactly you want your agency to be, who you want your agents 
to consistently like, you know, stay with, because if I don't have a way of hiring, retaining and training talented people, they're all going to leave me and they're all going to start their own insurance, like brokerage, like in five years, because I don't offer enough. So instead of asking, well, Hey, how much should I pay these guys? How much should I end up? How many leads are you going to get for your damn team? That's the question. How can you make sure that they're looking themselves in the mirror every single day when they get home and they say, you know what, I can start my own agency and I can make higher percentage on commissions, but I'm not going to sell as much because, you know, Brian's not in my corner, right? Will's not in my corner, like because Adam Ryder isn't in my corner. That's the way that I transition to my thought process to make sure things line themselves out correctly. So, like I said, we have five more minutes. If anyone has any questions or comments really quick to kind of go over, I would love to end up doing that because I don't like monologuing. I do though. I do like monologuing. Charles, I got another question for you. Um, are you shaping your agency differently now than when you were captive? Are you like, are you trying to sell a different type of person now after you kind of experience something through a captive agency also? Well, like, so look, our Liberty Mutual has a great ability for um, standard business, right? People that have homes, auto, toys, right? Uh, that, that business is still the most profitable business, right, to get into. Because those are the same people that want to get life insurance. Those are the same people that need annuities. Those are the same people that have a bunch of toys to where that way I can get one client to say yes but they say yes to three policies, four policies, and all of those policies make them stick. So because of that, I'm not looking at a different type of person, but I am presenting myself in a different way, right? So to answer your question a little bit more in depth, right? My goal as from what I switched from a captive agency to what I'm building now is based around the idea of I know that people leave big box stores and why? Well, it's because they always, they're, everyone's getting micromanaged. Everyone, they're asking about how many follow-up calls that you've done, how many of this you've done. You know what? What if I can clear all that crap off the checkerboard and then just say, I want you to do your damn job and sell things because you said you love that. So does that answer it a little bit better, Will? All right, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Uh, I, I was interested in how uh, how you kind of change things from from captive to independent. So I, I captive to independent, same you know five year captive, and I'm just trying to sell a different type of client, I guess. Where uh, when I was captive, we were fast and furious and selling a bunch of policies, but it was also a lot of crap. And so I don't want that crap anymore, you know, because it came to bite me in the ass. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to steer clear of all that. And just, yeah. I mean, like, then that, that's the good point. Like if you are trying to find whatever that type of business is, what does all that business have in common? Okay. So start thinking about it. All right. Uh, maybe they all have kids. Maybe they all have high school kids. All right. Do a quote for donation drive at a high school. Okay. Uh, support a local, like, you know, football league, not, not team find out like a peewee league, and then open it up to do a quote for donation for all of their parents. Okay. You can write that down. I don't care. Take it, steal it. It doesn't matter to me. All right. Um, you can end up touching bases with a driving school where you can do a quote for donation, or you can just say, Hey, you know, if you fill this stuff out, we donate X, Y, Z dollars to like toys for tots, make it something that you care about because if it's not sincere, no one's going to believe you. So if you really have a passion for something, run it. If you have a passion for pit bulls, do a quote for donation for pit bulls. Great. Find a way that whatever it is that you're passionate about can be a way for you to drive either exposure for that piece of business or mo money to that piece of business to end up helping and successfully pushing forward the people that you care about most. All right. And I guess that's my time. I'm sorry. I kind of blacked out in the last like 30 seconds. So if you want to rewatch me on like super slow motion because I go super fast, I apologize. But I hope everyone like actually liked this conversation and that it didn't sound too ridiculous as I kind of went off the deep end for a quick second. Like I said, I'm either on to something or I have early onset dementia. Who knows? But the biggest takeaway that we, me and Brian want all of our users to take from this because it's a lot of information is laser focus on one thing. 
focus on one thing, make that acceptable for you and then move on. Don't get overwhelmed with all the stuff Charles is talking about. Watch the video again and then pick something and build it. Then go back and pick another thing and build it, right? That's the biggest takeaway. So if we hit the time limit on the nose, have a good one, y'all. Uh, you know, it's just, it's great seeing that we had a pretty good turnout. I mean, I think we were topping out like people. So I just want to thank y'all for coming in and listening to whatever in the world I end up having come out of my mouth most of the time. Hey, that was great. I think, uh, I think everyone got a lot out of that. And it's also nice change just hearing a different viewpoint other than mine or Matt's too. You know, we've said it from the beginning, everyone uses us a little bit different. It's a different world from South Dakota to Houston, Texas, to Northern California, to Little Rock, Arkansas. Like it's just different. And so to get those different viewpoints kind of lets everyone else think and, and create on their own and hopefully, uh, you know, sparked up some creativity and uh, everyone's ready to go take some action and, and do something new in their account today. Hopefully that's the plan. So thank you for your time, Charles. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Charles. Y'all have a good one now.